Hey everybody, it's Never here at the Goblin Barbecue to talk about add-ons and related stuff. I want to get through this kind of quickly uh, so we can start talking about the, the fun parts. So the first thing I want to talk about is the overwolf thing. And I don't think we need to be that worried about overwolf. Uh, here's the real concern is that overwolf, the way they work is they allow add-on makers to monetize their add-ons and then Overwolf gets a cut of the revenue. And that might sound good for add-on makers, and it is, but what that means is that if they control the entire add-on space for WoW, then what are people going to do? They're going to complain at first. But it it really just comes down to if, if Overwolf, um, if all of the stuff on Curse becomes uh, locked behind a paywall, and you need to use the Overwolf uh, software, which is something that I don't want, um, then people will just stop using Curse. They'll move their add-ons somewhere else if they want to keep them free, or if the free ones, uh, or if the ones on Curse are the, um, or if those are only available there, then somebody will make another one that is free somewhere else because they don't want to pay for it either. Now there's some add-ons that I would be willing to pay a little for, but I mean, I've got to be real, there's add-ons are a convenience in every case there the default games interface is sufficient to do almost everything you need to do uh, it unless you're playing at a very high level certainly higher than I tend to play you don't need add-ons to get by it's just something that I like and so I could do without a lot of them before I'm actually going to spend real money on a regular basis on them and that's just the way it is some people may feel differently and, you know, I I appreciate the add-ons that are there but I think a lot of people make them because they want to because they enjoy them and because it's a good way to develop some useful skills that you can create a portfolio of and demonstrate to other people you know to get, to get a job writing Lua or some other similar type of code so I'm not really worried about it because the worst case scenario is Overwolf locks it all down. You have to use their client to use anything from Curse, and so then people just move their add-ons off of Curse. We've already seen a little bit of a departure from Curse with certain things. So if you're concerned about that, it could be painful, but it's not impossible. So don't worry about it too much. That's the whole thing. So then um, the second thing I want to talk about is what add-ons I'm using and why where they go, all of that stuff. It's been quite a while since I've done a video like this, so uh, buckle up, this is gonna take some time. So here is my wow up. Now you can get wow up at this this link literally here. And it is a lightweight add-on manager that really does nothing but manage add-ons. If you were going to pay for an add-on, then Patreon wow up. If everybody just Patreons them, a dollar a month that that would make a really big difference and this is a this is a really good add-on manager and the reason it's good is because that's the only thing it does and it does it really well um, there are a couple of glitches and caveats that I'll get into so um, the way that you it does um, all four well there's more than four but it does the four channels that I have in place and it'll show you the different add-ons that you have for that um, and then you can actually search for add-ons on it and you can sort them by who's downloaded them the most the thing you can't do yet which I hope that they'll add is um, allowing you to sort them based on uh, based on a, um, how recently they were updated and how popular they are it's like show me the most popular ones that have been updated in the last year something like that that would be really great uh, but anyway, I check for updates all the time because like my other video said, you can install them without closing the game and so every once in a while I'll just pop this up. I haven't updated Pratt because there is a, uh, a manual fix that somebody put out that I'm using and it hasn't been put into the main add-on yet. You can actually just click on the name of it here and it'll come up in your browser and you can look at the comments and see what the status of it is. Uh, to tell if you want to update it. Now most of you won't need to get that detailed into how it works. Uh, for example, I am using the alpha channel 
for the retail game because I want to get updates as soon as possible, but that also means that sometimes things might be broken, like the current version of Pratt still throws some errors on some stuff that I use a lot, so I'm using manual fixes and haven't updated it yet. And so that's why it's on the top, is because there's updates for it, but these updates are three days old and do not contain the fixes that I'm using yet. So let's go through the rest of them. And we'll see if we can show where they are. Um, Ace 3 is just a uh, kind of a back end library that's necessary for a lot of other things to run. If you need it, the add on will say so when you're downloading it. Um, and this shows, this is for sound effects. I believe this is to make some stuff in Weak Aura's work, but I honestly don't remember for sure, and so it's still in there. Maybe it's unnecessary. This thing is wonderful, and it works so well that I forget about it sometimes, but this prevents a bunch of the obnoxious spam in trade, and it can automatically report people that will put certain things into their chat messages. It's, it's one of those things that should almost be default in the game. Bagnon is what I use for my bags. And so that's what allows them to be all one big page. It's what allows me to be able to look at my bank when I'm not there. It caches this, so it'll only show you the most recent thing it's seen. So if you go on a character that you haven't been on in a while, then it might, uh, their, the vision of their bank might be out of date. And indeed, you can click here and see a list of all your characters and then see what's in their banks. Um, or you can even search for stuff and it'll show you where it is. Like if I want to see, um, ooh. bindings of the wind seeker. Well, here they are. I have both of them, but I haven't finished the quest yet because I'm lazy. And I don't even know if I can finish the quest because I don't know if you have to equip the item in the end. And so then I'd be blowing like a hundred thousand gold to not finish a quest. So that's another, that's another thing that'll probably make it into a video, but that's, that's what Bagnon does. Bagnon's pretty great. Uh, and you can, you can customize it. You can get the theme of it going to match all the other stuff you're doing. Bagnon BOE, it just shows you in your bags if one of your items is a BOE. And so like this one right here, it says it right there so that when I'm going through a bunch of stuff and it's like, which stuff is BOE? It just puts it there so that I can very quickly sort through them instead of accidentally vendoring something that could sell on the auction house a lot better. Better Wardrobe and Transmog is, um, it's new to me, but it's been around for a little while. And boy, is it fantastic. And so I'm just going to pull up my very ugly... I think that this thing is atrocious, just to look at, just so you know. I, I think it's really ugly. But I'm going to pull this up. And so here is some of the transmogs that I've made. Let's look at my Bilbo Baggins transmog. Oh, come on. This one is a little buggy right now where you've got to click it twice for everything to update sometimes. Not sure why. Um, this is if I want to... Um, RP is Bilbo Baggins. I put this as my resto sometimes. But this allows you to make a very big transmog window. You don't have to have it this big. Um, it allows you to save many more sets and it shows you all of the sets that are there. It even shows you extra sets um, that are partial and whether you have them. And there are you know 16 pages of these sets and you can just click one and then um, it will fill in all the pieces that you that it has, but that doesn't mean it has every slot, if that makes sense. But like these don't have a tab art, so it won't show the tab art. But if I go here and go to hidden tab art, and then I can go back to the extra sets, and then, hey, here we go. We can see them. Or I guess it went back there. But anyway, this thing, it does a lot of stuff. I'm still figuring a lot of it out, but it is better than the default one, which is really what I care about. And I want to be able to save more outfits. And so that's that's what it does, and it does a good job. All right. The next one is um, all the broker things. Those just uh, plug into my Titan panel. So like broker money shows me gold right here. Here you can see a bunch of the characters that I have and I, I give them silly names because they they just get used for stuff like farming achievements or running old raids sometimes if I just want to make some raw gold or get some cross-character transmog 
And so that's what all of that stuff does. So now you can see all my alts and try to gank them when I'm not in war mode on them or something. I don't know. People, when they make videos, people hide the weirdest stuff. And I don't know. I don't know why people get all, all bent out of shape about it. Okay, the next one. Uh, location's the same thing. Can I mog it is just a little thing that shows you um, whether you can transmog stuff or not. So like these little check marks here, that shows me that it's a BOE, but I already have this. It's just like that thing up there that says you've collected this appearance, but not from this item. Learn from another item. This is only worth 138 gold. I'm a completionist, so I'm actually going to soul bind it. And now I've learned that one. And so the checkbox, um, it, it changes. And this will just, at a glance, give you a little thing that tells you whether you can transmog it and if you have and all of that stuff. So um, that's just a completionist thing. But it's, again, at a glance, I can see what the status of, of something like that is. Cecile Quick Launch is something that I'm very sad about because it has not been updated for Shadowlands and I I would demonstrate it. I've made another video about it in the past and I love it and it is it has not been updated. What it essentially does is it brings up a command line interface window and you can just type in a partial name of a mount or a toy or an item or a pet or an achievement or almost anything and it will populate a list as if there were wild cards on either end of the string that you type and then you can arrow keys or mouse click to quickly access them and so if you want to get all of your if you want to get a, a noodle mount out or something normally you'd have to go here and you'd have to start typing like serpent and then here it this does the same thing but then you've got to scroll through this and um, see which one you want right click it and go to mount which is just a lot more steps than it would be to simply bring up a command line type in part of the word serpent see all the list uh, populated right there and just click one boom you're done and so it's it's a quick launch thing and it has not been updated for Shadowlands the last update was in 2016 so I'm really hoping that the add-on maker updates it I've asked in the comments for that to happen and um, they've made updates to some of their other add-ons so there's a decent chance. Champion Commander is just something that automates or simplifies one of the garrison mission tables from one of the expansions. I don't remember which one it is. It might be, I don't know. It's, it's one of the last three expansions. Chat loot icons just shows um, the icon of the loot in chat. It's real simple and it's another at a glance thing that makes life easier. Chinchilla mini map I've been using for many, many years. And that is what makes my mini map do this thing. Um, it can do squared or rounded corners in pretty much any combination you want. It will make it so that your buttons can auto hide on mouse over and it can adjust the position of a lot of things like my quest frame um, not only is it higher up and closer to the edge but it's also taller than it normally would be and all of that sort of stuff is done by chinchilla and it allows me to do the border that i like to maintain a consistent look throughout my ui and so um, for a while there it wasn't getting consistent updates but it's been doing really well lately um, color picker plus it just gives you a more advanced detailed color picker it's it's like the one that's more default in windows um, it's not necessary but it it sure helps deadly boss mods um, that's a very well-known one and it works really great um, one thing I need to do is I need to remove the PvP mods from DBM and go back to using capping because I found out that capping was just turned out to be better. Deja character stats, the only reason that I use that is so I can see my current movement speed. Uh, pretty much everything else isn't really necessary, although it's uh, it's not bad. 
Um, the only reason I'd consider not using it as much is because sometimes it does weird stuff. Sometimes the, they put in things that, you know, like as an April Fool's or whatever, and I, I don't care about that in add-ons. I just want them to do their thing. Dynamic Cam just gives you more control over the action camera that was added to the game kind of stealthily. And so that's why um, I've got it configured so that um, my character fills the frame, but I can also see up higher. Because normally, as I, as I zoom out, my character would stay in the center of the screen, or at least like their, their eye line stays in the center of the screen, but it, it, uh, it tends to move my character down as I do that so that like my feet always stay kind of right here. And that allows me to see a lot more of it. I mean, if you look at that, if this was here, then I wouldn't be able to see the tops of these trees. When you're fighting a boss and you can actually see the whole thing, I find that very helpful. It's very helpful to see up what's happening. And so I can still see what's on the ground just behind me. And so that's, that's what I found is really good. And Dynamic Cam just lets you more easily adjust that sort of stuff. Although it's not terribly necessary if you know how to do this, uh, the client variables yourself. GatherMate um, is, it just shows you where all the stuff is. Like right here, there tends to be a lane snapper school. And even on the map, um, it'll show you some of that other stuff. Some of this is handy notes, um, but a lot of it's like the really tiny ones are GatherMate. And if you have a gathering profession, which I don't, um, it'll show all those too. Handy Notes is all of that other mini-map stuff, and it does a ton of it like um, the rares. It'll tell you whether I've killed it, what stuff from it I have. Uh, another thing that kind of goes hand in hand with this is the Tomcats Tours things. And it's really just, show me all the things so I don't have to buy that treasure thing for each zone or whatever and there's a there's a ton of them it, you know, it'll show you all of this stuff and like there's where are the rares that show up on this one well they're not there because I've either killed them um, for this reset or I've already gotten the stuff from them so it doesn't need to show them anymore and so that's what handy notes does and there's a million different plugins for handy notes it's kind of like DBM there's there's one main add-on and there's a ton of stuff that goes in in with it and so that's handy you see there's a lot of them because i like to keep stuff for old things because i like to finish up old achievements as you can see i'm working on some mechagon ones immersion is what uh, i use instead of the normal um uh quest text let me find a quest giver Ooh, there's a rogue there I might kill that rogue. Alright. This is instead aid. of the normal quest frame, I can right click this to go through the stuff that she says, and then I can left click it to take the quest if I want. I'm not going to uh, worry about doing that because I don't care that much about 40 spare parts, but I do care about ganking this rogue. So we're going to go ahead and do that. You can see how bad I am. But um, not so bad that I can't kill the world. So these are the guys that have the gas that you can't escape. But we can escape these. See if I can do a few other damage. So, as we're getting away from the guards. Druids are really, really slippery. It's easy to get away from them. Look at all my procs and stuff. Battle for Azeroth sticks around a little bit I'm like a Christmas tree whenever I go into combat. Alright, cool. So that was Immersion, which is a different uh, quest UI. Item Link Level. That is, it just shows when somebody links an item in chat, it shows what its item level is and a couple more details about it. It's another one of those at a glance things. Leatrix Plus. Leatrix Plus is kind of a all-in-one toolbox 
for add-ons, which hides like error messages like you're too far away to cast that. And it's not the error speech, you can hide that in the default UI, but it's like the things that go across there because I find a lot of those obnoxious. The only downside to that is that sometimes you're like, why isn't this thing working? And that, that'll actually tell you why, but it's not there. This, if you only want to have a few add-ons, you don't want like a hundred something like I use, this is one of the really good ones because it can do a lot of the things that many other add-ons do. Um, there, there's a ton of stuff and you can just pick through it but if you were just going to have like one or two add-ons like this plus DBM would be a really good way to have a super minimal lightweight UI that doesn't have any drain on system resources and still gets you the functionality that you really need so uh, it's a very very useful useful add-on Mapster is just the map one that I use, and there's a bunch of other good ones. I just like this one because I can resize the map frame. And so uh, there's others that actually clean this up even more, but I can't resize the map frame, so that's why I continue to rely on that. Mask is what I use to theme all of my buttons to be similar. Um, I use different ones for different things, but it's it's what allows things to look the way I want them to. And so that's that's why I use that. There's a plugin so that it'll work with uh, Pitbull, which is what I use for my unit frames. But I like everything to have kind of that faded black border around it, and you'll see that, hey, look, all of their things use the same thing. Uh, and we'll get into more of that in a minute. Uh, Master Plan is another one of those garrison mission tables for one of the expansions. Don't remember which that does it. Model Peak lets you look at uh, pets or mounts that are linked in chat and see an actual picture of them. Move Anything is one of the buggier add-ons that I use, but um, if you're getting a, a huge slowdown with your UI, then that might be the case. Switch to the Alpha Channel. If you are, you can switch to the Alpha Channel for just one add-on if you need to. Um, but that allows me to put stuff in a place where I want it. And you, um, like the extra action button, I don't want it right in the middle of my face, so I put it down here. Other stuff like that, it, it really lets you move anything, which is really nice. Sometimes it's the culprit of I can't find something that I need because I moved it and can't remember where I put it. Mythic Dungeon Tools is something that I'm just getting used to using because I'm actually starting to do more... Um, mythic dungeon stuff and so I'm gonna be uh, the tank for my group in Shadowlands and so I actually kind of need to get my act together with that uh, like in Warlords of Draenor when I was main tank for my guild um, so it's just the the next chapter of stuff never is doing Narcissus is something that also helps to um, make your character pretty uh, and this does some interesting stuff like I can double tap my uh, character sheet button and get all of this stuff and so there's there's a bunch of things with this I haven't played around with very much um, but that's what that does neat plates is just my name plates you've seen that around when I've ever I've gotten close to something that I can uh, kill and I like it because I can set it to the neon theme that's from the old tidy plates it's basically tidy plates but just updated and it makes it very easy to see things like enemy nameplates so I know who I can gank because I'm one of those people. NPC scan just scans for rares and shows them. It's like the simplest one. It's the oldest one that is really popular and I've been using it for a very long time which is why in the other video I just uninstalled rare scanner as soon as I put it in. Nothing against rare scanner, I just, I'm used to this one. Omni CC just gives me more control over what the cooldowns on my buttons look like. Um, Opi Mask puts mask on Opi. And Opi is another one of those, if you only want a few add-ons, Opi and DBM and Leatrix Plus. If I had to go for just the bare minimum add-ons that I really need, that's probably it. Opi lets me do these menus that have all the sub-menus and it's unbelievably useful I, I cannot stress this enough how great this is uh, like here's the mounts that I use the most and so I have them in their own thing and I can just summon them so quickly it's just such an amazing add-on Opie might be 
it might be my favorite add-on just because of how great it is. Order Hall Commander is again another one of those garrison mission table <laughs> things. I think that's the last one. Overachiever just uh, put stuff on the map or in tool tips that helps you get achievements and know if you've completed stuff. Paragon Reputation is one that is really new, uh, or at least new to me, that anything that's already exalted that has a Paragon thing, it shows where you are in Paragon Rep. I don't know why this isn't in the default UI. This is such a good thing, because otherwise you would actually need to come over here and hover over the little thing to see what the Paragon Rep is. I don't know why you would need to see the word exalted a million times for stuff that you could see Paragon are. Because anything that's exalted, I put it down here in inactive because I've already finished it. So that one's, that's like one of those no-brainer ones. Pet Battle Master and Pet Tracker are just things that I use for pets. And... Um, one of them, I think, is actually turned off right now because it's not finished updating yet. But that it gives you um, pet teams for pet battles that you can just store. So if you like go around and do all of the pet battle dailies, which I haven't for a long time, but um, if you're trying to build up an army of pets and get some of the harder to get uh, battle pet achievements, having a team built for each encounter you can even set it to automatically switch to them when you click on the NPC. Uh, it's super useful and it helps to automate a lot of that stuff. It also gives you information uh, that you can see in each zone what, what pets in that zone you've collected and what the quality of them are. So it's another one of those at a glance things to save you time. Pitbull unit frames I've been using for a very long time and it's been updated quite faithfully um, there's other really good ones like Shadowed or uh, X-Pearl, um, and there's others. I just like what I'm able to do with Pitbull. I like the, uh, the layout, and I like how much flexibility there is, and that's just why I've continued to use it. I've tried others, and there's always some little detail that I can't do the way that I want to, and so I would say that it's maybe the most configurable one out there. Quartz is my cast bar. I like it because I can make my cast bar look like all my other bars, so it fits in. Quest Completionist, it's just like all of the other things, it's more at a glance tracking that lets you know, have you done this stuff? It's it's really just another at a glance thing. Raider IO is one of those things that I don't know if it if I like that it needs to exist, but since I'm getting more into Mythic Plus and Shadowlands, it's kind of a necessity if I'm going to need to pug anything at all, which there is a good possibility of. Maybe not, um, but we'll see. Rarity is what I use to keep track of how many times I have attempted to get the um, Great Sea Ray or other things. You can see the Great Sea Ray, 4,128 attempts, and that's just the ones that um, were there when Rarity had been updated. There was a, a week or two in there where it hadn't, and all of those attempts did not get added to the count. And so that'll tell you how many times you've actually tried to do something. Like if I look at how many times I've tried to get the um, the dragon from Time Walking Dungeons, it's a lot of times. Raven is what I use to track most of my buffs and debuffs. Like this down here is from Raven. All the debuffs I got when I was ganking that rogue and the guards wanted to kill me were from Raven. But some of them, like these little ones, uh, some of those are actually from Pitbull. And I'll go over um, how all of that works and the layout of that stuff too. Scrap is what I use to automate junk selling and the reason I use that instead of the one built into Leatrix Plus is because there's a few junk items I do not want to sell, such as these empty Brewfest bottles which I like to throw at people because if you throw them at players there's no players around here because it's <laughs> it's early 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 in the morning and I'm on PvP Mechagon because I still need to oh wait I don't even need to kill people here oh <laughs> sorry rogue um, I'm trying to get the weekly call to arms and it's really easy if you can go a ganking 
And like in the other video I made, Mechagon is the place to be for ganking. Oh boy, <laughs> if you're a druid and you can get PvP in cat form. Simulation craft is if you want to run, uh, run, run stats on your character. If you want to get deeper down the rabbit hole, and I'll make a separate video about this at some point, um, how to set your character up and how to know if you're doing well or not. This is an important piece of that. It allows you to to not spend all the time at the target dummy and instead let a computer do it for you. Skinner is what makes um, all my frames look pretty. And um, I there's a feature I wish that Skinner had, but it doesn't yet. So uh, there's certain frames, just a couple of them actually, a couple of frames that I've got some Skinner stuff turned off on. Um, or don't use it on at all. Usually when there's new frames from an expansion, I like to see them before I choose to skin them, just so that I can see if they're like really pretty. If they're really cool to look at, then I won't skin them. Like this one. There's context here with all the stuff, and so I don't, I don't skin this yet. At some point, I, I may, but let's see. this, when it's skinned, these are kind of hard to tell what's going on. And so it, I, I use it digi uh, judiciously. Uh, tip tack is my tooltip. I like it because it, it's funny because it's not always like super fast. Like you'll see the border sometimes takes a moment to get applied. If I tooltip over something else, there it went dark. And so uh, that's, that's just because it's not sitting there crazy and a bunch of stuff taking memory, but all of the things that it adds to the tooltip are really handy and you can you can customize how they look. Um, TipTac MSP just allows what's called the Mary Sue protocol from RP mods like Total RP3 to supply information in the TipTac tooltip, which is why when I hovered over my own name you could see um, for Total RP3 I, I just shortened my name to Never. That's mostly all I do with that and then it allows me to see other people's stuff so that if I do walk up RP with them um, I'm not a total noob and am unable to see what's going on. Trade Skill Master, the most controversial add-on that I have. Um, Trade Skill Master is wonderful. There's a learning curve to it. It's a lot to get into. Um, if there's enough of a demand I will let people know exactly how I use that and what I do. It's not as scary as it seems. If you want to um, take a step toward it, but don't really want to do it yet, go to, uh, go get Auctionator. That's what my wife uses, because it's simpler, um, but not as powerful. Trade Skill Master, one of, if you're going to get it for nothing else, just get it for the tooltips. Now, it does require you to run a desktop application um, that can just sit in your system tray, but that keeps up to date. Like Every 20 minutes, it gets new information and then supplies it directly into the game which is super useful so I can see oh let's take a look at these fish there's a lot of information here and once you get used to it you can see how valuable it is right now on the auction house like right now the minimum buyout for these fish is 15 gold and if you take a look up there under accounting you can see um, when I've sold them I, there were some I sold for 26 gold and then there were some I sold for three so right now might actually be a good time to sell these great sea catfish. The last time I bought them, they were really cheap. I paid like maybe four gold for them. That's the max price that I, oh, the, yeah, the last time I purchased them was 21 hours ago. So you can see it, there's, and you can put even more information in here than you want, but when you're trying to decide, can I, should I sell this or should I keep it like this, uh, when this was a BOE, I could see, well, what's the market value or what's the region sale average? 73 gold for this, not even worth it to try to sell the thing. I'll just learn the transmog and then vendor it. Because it vendors for 79 gold. And so why would I even bother? In fact, you can make some gold by, um, if you learn how to configure this, you can scan the auction house for things that are listed on the auction house for less than their vendor value and just buy all those and pocket the difference. TSM is extremely useful once you learn how to use it, and I don't even use it to its fullest potential at all. 
Transmog tokens is um, another thing that gives you at a glance. Um, so I guess that's the checkbox. There's another one. Uh, there is another transmog thing. It, between the two of them, it shows me all the transmog stuff that I need to know. But I uh, obviously can't remember which part goes to which. Um, unlimited map pin distance. The new map pin, I actually really like it. Um, but this allows, normally it, if you're more than a thousand yards away from something, it will not display the, the map pin anymore. And this just lets it show forever. And so I only use it if I'm like going to something right now. I like it because if you link it in chat, you know that anyone can click the link and get where it is. So when PVP uh, supply chest drop, I always use the, uh, the map pin and link that in chat for people instead of typing in coordinates that they have to go with like, do I have a coordinates add on? It, it just, it makes it so that that's usable by everybody, which is really great. But this just lets it work from farther away so that I don't have to open the map and see if I'm pointed in the right direction which I'll get to in two more add-ons. Weak auras, <clears throat> weak auras is, is weak auras, and that's what I use for like my combo points where you saw all the little wrath projectiles for combo points. That's that's where that comes from. I don't use it for a lot of other stuff. Some people have built their entire UI in weak auras. There's, there's a few people out there, uh, some people on YouTube that, oh my goodness, they have got the most beautiful UIs uh, made by weak auras, and that is beyond my skill to do at this point. Where do we go now? Um, when you're in a flight mode or something, and it changes the scale a little bit depending on what kind of map you're in, but it shows these dots. So if, if like I wanna know where exactly am I headed, most of the time this will point like almost all the way across the map. It's just a lot easier to figure out, am I going in the right direction to get where I wanna go? Just a simple little thing that helps with that. And finally, World Quest Tracker does exactly what it says, tracks the World Quest. Here they are. At a glance, I can see what they are. You see, most of the add-ons are either to make something look pretty or save you time to make it so that it doesn't take as long. That's it. So here's, here's a bunch of World Quests that we can see in other places. It's gonna take a while. <laughs> It's, oh, Valdun, is Valdun the thing? Valdun is the thing. How much longer is it? Six hours. I know where I'm going. Okay, so those are all of the add-ons that I use. Now, let's talk about the ones that you can see on the screen and what they're doing and how they configure. There is one we skipped because I'm about to talk about it and I didn't see it in the list. Somehow I skipped Bartender. <laughs> Uh, all you people are probably laughing at me. Bartender is what I use for my action bars. Right there, that's it. So, yeah, let's move this out of the way. 103 add-ons. And most of that, most of it's DBM and Handy Notes plugins. Just so you know. So, this is Bartender. And um, I've got this set up in a, a really weird sort of way. Um, let's just unlock this and you can see bar one bar two bar nine uh, here's all these other bars some of them are longer than others here's a little one over here and this is just because I use um, a uh, razor orb weaver which is an updated version of the uh, Nostromo n52 ne which is an updated version of the uh, Belkin N52 speed pad, which is an updated version of the Belkin N50 speed pad. Which is, um, if you just look up Razor Orb Weaver, you'll see that it is a uh, kind of like a keyboard thing for your left hand. It doesn't replace your keyboard, it's just keys in a convenient layout with a, um, with kind of like a D-pad for your thumb that allows you to very quickly access things. I never, ever have to look at my keys to make sure my hand is in the right position when I'm playing because they're, because putting your hand on it immediately gives you exact muscle memory positioning for where you're, for where you're going and what you're doing. And so these are just all the bars that things page to depending on what I'm doing or what form I'm in. I customize all of that um, 
with like state configuration and whatnot. So like bar one, which was these 10 buttons right here, it switches to page five uh, for bear form, page six for cat form in stealth and it, or, well, page five and page five because of macros, but that's just how I get all of that working. And that gets into macros, which gets, it's fairly complex, but if you're, if you're a guy who, <laughs> who likes to build UIs, then this is a good way to go. And so you'll see, um, like this top row stays consistent always. These other three change depending on what's happening. So if I go bear for these changed and this change. Cat form, it's the same. Um, moon can form, I don't have in this spec because I don't have balance affinity, but it'll change this as well. Um, and so that's just how I make everything work consistently with my UI. Now, if you want to do a really simple one, you can just get two action bars um, if you're using an orb weaver, because an orb weaver literally has five by four, so five or four rows of five buttons on it. And so this represents exactly what my fingers are touching. And that's why I like it. And I've got, um, if I push shift, which is just up on my D-pad mapped on the orb weaver, um, then it goes to another set of actions. And this is always the same no matter what form I'm in. And this is just stuff that is accessible to every form that I want to get to. This top row here, this is obviously um, Berserk or Incarnation, and it'll be Ravenous Frenzy. You know, spoiler alert on covenant choice um and i'll just macro that in because it's exactly the same thing and it, whatever but this is always moon conform this is always cat form this is always bear form this is always humanoid form and each of them performs a different function depending on what form i'm in like this is bear form but if i switch to bear form it changes to taunt this is cat form but if i switch to cat form that same button is prowl so no matter what um what form i'm in i can just double tap whatever button this is this is moon conform and changes to flap if i've got moon conform available either in spec or affinity and so i can just double tap whatever it is so um if i'm falling and i'm gonna die and i'm in balance spec i can double tap this and it pushes flap or this also pushes hibernate if i'm in humanoid form so, um, and that's all done through macros, but this bar stays consistent, which is why it is bar nine, and this is bar one. So that's probably the most complicated part of my UI because it's accomplished through, um, through bartender and through macros. So you'll see like, um, that's a bad example, this one, Right, this is this one right here, and these are named so that I know exactly um, what they are, and they're just uh, sort of encoded so that I can keep these all consistent because every single button on my action bars is a macro, and if I need to move a spell, then I will go to the position that that macro belongs to, and I will rewrite the macro for the new spell, maybe change its icons. I like the icons to be pretty, which is why they don't match the spells that they belong to, uh, except for a couple of them, like Incarnation or Tranquility. And so that's how that works. It looks really complicated, but it's not really that bad. You just need to learn how to write macros, which I have some old videos on, but if, if people need an updated version of that, then I'm happy to do that. Um, there are some new macro things that have made some of this quite nice, and in fact, They've made some of the things I'm doing a little unnecessary just because of the new conditions that macros have gotten in the last few years um, have made it so that I could combine stuff into, um, into a macro even better than before. Okay, so um, the next thing, I talked about Chinchilla Minimap, and that's where that is. Um, I guess these over here this is just one of the bars that's hidden off the center of the off the corner of the screen and bartender can make it so things show up only when you hover over them these are two of the strangest macros that i have um, and one of them is um, this is a flight form button that is mapped to one of my mouse buttons and this just does a lot of stuff and so it combines a ton of things into one button. And that's all. This is a similar thing. It's just a, a very 
general macro that makes a lot of things happen so that they all work with one button and these all happen to work together. Uh, and so I use those two, even though I don't have flight form on other characters, I use those on any character I get to, like my bank hold or whatever, just because they perform really useful functions like dismount or fishing or adjusting um, camera positioning, throwing my looterang, that sort of stuff. And it's just two buttons that do all of those things. Um, so Raven is where all my buffs and debuffs go. And if I I'm trying to find how to show where the anchors are, but I can't remember because this has been set up for so long. So that's funny. There we go. Um, so here's all the anchors. So, oh, it looks like I am using these both for, so there are no, uh, there are no buffs being shown by Pitbull at this point. It's all done by Raven. And I like Raven just because it's fully configurable. If you've ever used um, Citrina from back in the day, I don't believe that one's updated anymore. This is basically a new and improved version of the same thing in concept. But this is where all those things go. So my debuffs go here, my buffs go there. Uh, the main debuffs and main buffs are things that are just important to track. It, like if you have the personal resource display shown and the default um, uh, nameplates, the stuff on the default nameplates is here, the stuff on the personal resource display is here. I just like to put them in those places. And that's where all that works and it keeps everything really clean. If um, so. This shows me a full and a full comprehensive list of all the debuffs and buffs on the target, which is a whole lot more than the default UI will show because they'll just show the relevant ones. This shows me everything so that I can see, like an enemy player, if I want to, I can see everything that they have going on. I don't know, do they, do they have potions or do they have some goofy item effect or whatever? So I know whether ganking them will be successful. Uh, Pitbull. is wonderful and somebody asked for me to demonstrate what my raid UI looks like so if I go to a 40 man raid this is the config version of it but yeah if you want to lag the game push this because it has to load everything but this is where it all goes and these are all of the possible things that it can display but um, this is me this is my target this is my pet if I have one or if I get into a vehicle this switches to me and the vehicle goes here um, this is my focus, this is my target of target, and this is my focus as target. And the reason that's so big is because I focus the tank. So if I'm DPS or if I'm healer, the tank is always my focus, and so I can see what the tank is targeting, and it's a big thing, so I can click it, and then I'm targeting what the tank is targeting, instead of having to click them and push assist or something like that. It's again, just something that makes it quick and easy. Here are raid members, they are sorted, there's five per row. This is group one, group two, group three, but it doesn't space them out by groups. It's ju it just starts with group one and it just clumps everyone together. So if you've got um, a full, if you have a full 40 man raid, then this is obviously always group eight. But if you have like 20 people, they can be spread out into eight groups, but it would still just populate this many of them. And this is, they're very consistent and uh, a five-man party stays right here so it just grows out this far to where my um, damage meter is and I didn't talk about that so I obviously skipped that in the list too because that's details hey look it turned to daytime gradually or was that sudden <laughs> I've never noticed whether it does that suddenly or not in you know 15 years but anyway, that's that's what full raid UI looks like. It all stays right down here. And um, DBM populates up here. These are like right here are the longer term, smaller timers. Right here is where the more important big ones go. And I do the same thing for capping or DBM PVP, whichever I'm using at the time. And so that is, um, let me change this so you can see like a party it just shows right there and this is scooted off to the side and this is central so that I can when I'm solo I can see down here 
um, which makes it easier to see what's going on because you know I can get really close if I need to see something but you'll see feet tend to stay right around in this spot. Caspar goes along the center right here. Enemy Caspar, or target's Caspar, goes right above it. And I like those two right next to each other, so if I'm casting something and somebody else is casting something, I can see which one's gonna finish first so I can know whether I should stop casting because it's just gonna get interrupted or whatever. It's just one of those at a glance things. Um, and so that's, that's what the whole thing looks like. For that and so that's really the main gist of it um, details I put over in the corner I like details because I can left and right click and get through things very easily and see all of that stuff um, or I can right click and go to different bookmark things to see like all my healing done or whatever and I can I can choose to have it automate depending on what my spec is and so it's just you know, recount is good, Scott is good, I've used all of them, but I just like this one the best because it's the most minimal and easiest to navigate through. Um, and that's really the main gist of it. Uh, everything else is just small details or incidental. If you want to have the UI look like this, and I've done UI packages in the past, but there's such a nuisance to do in the current thing, like when it was the Curse client, then um, it was possible to make a package that people would just download and it would get you sort of the right stuff, but it's not really possible anymore. Um, so instead, uh, if, if people want, I can go over exact settings for the, uh, for the things to do, but a lot of it's really only relevant if you're a druid. I guess I should show weak auras. Weak auras is really basic. Um, I've got the horrific vision one that it's translated from Chinese and that's invaluable I mean it doesn't matter now because you can't get a lot of the stuff anymore um, but uh, most of these things like from details I don't even use those they're disabled in the add-on um, and so um, these are things that I'm experimenting with that might show up but mostly it's for my combo points because I really like them shown that way you saw the wrath icons because they're easy to see um, and that's that's the whole gist and layout of the UI if you want to make your UI look like mine you really just need Pitbull Raven Chinchilla minimap and bartender and mask with the uh, shadow theme for it and that's it that's that's where all the things come from because you could just have Pitbull show the combo points right up here like you know most sane people do so if anyone has any further questions or needs something clarified then leave a comment below but I hope that gives you the uh, information that you need and updates what's going on because the UI has been similar for a very long time and it's been exactly like this for quite a few years there's an older video that I have that shows the progression of my UI all the way up to, I think, the version before this one, and the only thing that changed in this is just the positioning of a couple of things. Um, oh, I guess you'll need quartz, too, That's uh, to make that look the same way. But there's also, you can achieve something so similar to this using the default UI, because you can right-click on the frame and then just go down to one of the options, and then it lets you move it, and you can just, you know, the default action bar goes here. You can move the... Uh, player and target frames to here and here and the buffs will go with them so you can achieve something similar to this with the default UI pretty easily but if you want it to look pretty then there you go um, the uh, the memory load for this is not small um, but if you take off TSM and uh, TSM and Raider IO uh, that's a lot of it the biggest ones are TSM, Raider IO, Handy Notes, and Rarity. Those things are more than half of the um, actual add-on usage. So if you want to pare it down, you can do that. Or if you just want to do it very minimally, then use the ones that I mentioned before. But anyway, I think that's enough rambling about UIs. Um, oh, Pratt. Here's my here's my chat mod. It's Pratt. You can't see it because that thing is there, but that's what I use. I put the chat down here in a corner, 
and um, the background is completely transparent. I put a uh, outline around all the text. Um, the font that I use, I actually use fonts um, in a folder is the way that I do it and I'll show you what that looks like. So if we go over here, um, let me scoot this on a little farther. So if we're, uh, we're in games on my uh, SSD, inside of retail you can make a folder called fonts and then all you need to do is um, take these fonts and rename them to these names so any font you want rename it to the this is all the same font they're just renamed to this and this is a font called Antigone I might be pronouncing that wrong but that's the font that you see everywhere and so if you just put it here you don't need an add-on to manage your font and you can just copy this fonts folder to um, any of the subversions that you want and it will override all of the fonts in the game with whatever you re with whatever font you rename to that name and that's why even on the login screen and everything that font is used for everything in the default UI because that's the font that I like that's why all of these look that way it's really hard to do that uh, nicely and consistently with an add-on so it's just a straight up override that I've been using for a long time. So I think that's everything. Um, again, if you have any questions or whatever, leave a comment below. I'll be happy to answer it. And uh, let me know what other things you want to see. Okay, thanks, bye.